Hey everybody, um, I know I haven't done children's book Thursday in a couple weeks now, but I got some really good children's books while I was in New York, um, so I'm excited to show you guys some of those. I'm just going to do one at a time because they're all too cool to um, put into a video because it would take me forever to get through them. Um, so I'm going to say in advance that at some point my boyfriend might be walking in here, um, so if I get distracted that is why. And if you are really lucky, you might see him <laughs> walking behind me. Um, we shall see. Maybe he'll make an appearance. Um, so my book today is Library Lion, which I got at um, the New York Public Library, which is really exciting for me. Um, they had an awesome store. I'm amazed that I did not spend more money than I did. I kept it pretty, pretty simple. But I couldn't pass up this book because... About libraries, and in case you didn't know it, I want to be a librarian, so um, went pretty nuts over this book. So basically, um, if you don't know, the symbol for the New York Public Library is the lion, um, and so this book is about a lion that comes to visit the library, and at first he's not very welcomed, and then he helps the librarian out, and then the librarian falls and the and breaks her arm the lion helps her to get help and um basically the moral of the story is that sometimes it's good to break rules so i will read a little bit of this book real quick um there we go all right one day a lion came to the library he walked right past the circulation desk and up into the stacks Mr. McBee ran down the hall to the head librarian's office. Miss Merriweather, he called. No running, said Miss Merriweather, without looking up. But there's a lion, said Mr. McBee, in the library. Is he breaking any rules, asked Miss Merriweather. She was very particular about rule breaking. Well, no, said Mr. McBee, not really. Then leave him be. The lion wandered all around the library. He sniffed the card catalog. He rubbed his head against the new book collection. Then he padded over to the story corner and went to sleep. No one was sure what to do. There weren't any rules about lions in the library. Um, so I'll give you a little bit close up of the illustrations. They look, I don't know what medium he used. They look almost um, like colored pencils or watercolors um anyway but there here's a shot of the outside of the library um so basically i think this is a really good read aloud book um maybe not necessarily a book for a kid to read um unless they're a pretty advanced reader um but it's kind of a cute story especially for a kid that likes to go to the library likes to read or Maybe a librarian could read it um, at the library. I'm sure that's happened lots of times. Uh, it's by Michelle, I'm shooting in the dark here, Michelle Nudson, and illustrated by Kevin Hawks. And it was a New York Times bestseller, so I guess that makes sense in New York. But uh, yeah, so I thought this was a really cute book. Um, the, my one beef with the book is that, well, I have two beefs with the book. The first beef with the book is that um, I don't like how both of the librarians are portrayed as old bullies. Like here, you can see these are the two main like librarian. I guess I guess maybe he is not a librarian, but she is. But both of the people that work in the library are older people, and I didn't really like that. Um, there is one younger person, uh, and she's the story lady in the book, but, um, so I thought that was kind of stereotypical, but I'm sure that's, like, what most kids think of when they think of librarians, um, I don't know, maybe I'm just offended. <laughs> um, yeah, my other view of the book is I don't like how there's so much text on the pages, which, I mean, 
they, it kind of splits up between like pages like that where it's all text and then pages like this where it's like a mix of text and illustration. My preference is a mix of text and illustration because if you ever were to have a child read this book, a uh, full page of text, text is usually pretty daunting and really kind of daunting even to me as a read aloud. Uh, when I see a full page of text, I'm like, oh boy, deep breath. <laughs> um, but still, I like the book. It's a cute story and the illustrations are nice, um, simple and pretty. Um, so I have something unrelated to this book but um, related to children's books in general. And recently um, I had a conversation with some fellow tutors and I've been thinking about this myself, about how different I look at children's books now that I use them in, a, I guess, an academic or teaching setting. Um, and I feel like a lot of children's books are written with the idea in mind that somebody's going to read this book to a child and not that the child's going to read it themselves. And it's kind of frustrating when you're trying to get kids to read because a lot of the books they just, they just can't read um, easily. So I was just wondering for anyone out there who's also worked with kids or parents out there, I know there's some parents that have been checking out my blog, I mean... Do you, do you feel like since you've had to share children's books with kids that you view them differently than you did before? Or, I mean, like, what's your viewpoint about children's books? I mean, like, there's a lot of really great children's books out there, but there are a lot of really bad ones. And I feel like some people that are writing these children's books aren't, like, they don't have the tools in mind about like what is going to make, like stories can make a book really successful, but they don't have the ideas and tools about what is going to make um, a children's book effective for learning and teaching. Um, so I just wonder if anyone else had any thoughts about that. I know that's kind of a weird mess and I probably just blow off, like boggled your mind. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that in case you haven't um, done so already, I'm giving away a bag from um, Strand Bookstore New York City for my recent trip, which was awesome. And you can read about it in my Sunday Salon post from this past weekend. There's a link to the giveaway in the left-hand corner of my blog, so if you click on that, leave a comment, then you'll be entered to win the bag, and I think I'm going to leave it up for two more weeks. Um, I'm going to announce the winner, not this Sunday, but the following Sunday. Uh, so if you want to win a cool bag, uh, you should. It's, I think it's a nice bag. I I won't lie to you, my dad carried around my books in it, and it was pretty sturdy because there were a lot of books in there. So that was my children's book Thursday post, and it is almost nine minutes now, so I suppose I should let you guys go. Hope you're having a fantastic week. I know that as soon as I got back to school, my brain just went and I couldn't believe how much stuff I have left to do before the end of the semester. So hopefully you're not as stressed out as me right now. Uh, and if you are, then maybe this Children's Book Thursday helped to relax you for a total of 8 minutes and probably 50 seconds. <laughs> okay, thanks. Bye. <laughs>